You might be thinking, what substrate could I use with the two steps, first excess sodium amide and then the workup with water, to make an internal alkyne? We just made propyne by using 2,2-dichloropropane with this two-step method. So, could we use a similar geminal dichloride like 2,2-dichlorobutane? Actually, this would not work. We would get the terminal alkyne. And the reason we get the 1-butyne is because the excess would drive us toward eliminating these beta protons because then we could make the butynide ion and then we'd work it up with water. So this two-step mechanism with excess sodium amide followed by water favors forming terminal alkynes. What then is the combination of substrate and reagents that'll get us to an internal alkyne. There is a method if we just use excess NaNH2 and we have the right starting material, namely a vicinal dihalide, 2,3-dichloropetane. This will give us the alkyne, but it will be in very low yield. There is, however, a two-step process for getting it in high yield. If we first react our geminal dichloride, 2,2-dichloropropane, propane, with excess sodium amide, we end up with the propionide ion. If we react the propionide ion with a methyl halide like methyl bromide, it will actually do an SN2 reaction where the alkynide ion acts as a nucleophile and the bromide leaves. And now we've got our internal alkyne in a high yield. This process, where we react an alkynide ion with an alkyl halide, is called alkylation. And it's very exciting because it allows you to increase the carbon-carbon skeleton. Our initial material had three carbon atoms, and our final material had four carbon atoms. Alkylation increases the carbon-carbon skeleton. This is a new and very powerful tool that we have not seen before. The substrate for alkylation is a terminal alkyne. First, it's treated with NaNH2 to deprotonate the terminal alkyne and make the alkynide ion, which is the strong nucleophile for our second step. The alkynide that's produced by reacting with the sodium amide is a strong nucleophile, which can then perform nucleophilic attack on either a primary alkyl halide or a methyl halide, and this gives us a high yield of our new internal alkyne. It's very important that the second reagent 
be a primary halide or a methyl halide. If you have secondary or tertiary, you won't get alkylation. What you'll get is elimination. And you'll turn it into an alkene. What if we started out with 4-methylpentwonine and did alkylation by first reacting it with sodium amide and then ethyl bromide? Pause your video now and draw the outcome. Then you can unpause it and see if what you get matches what I get. Here is my product. We added the ethyl group where the hydrogen was. You'd name this product 6-methylhept-3-ine. If you got something different, it might be useful to go through the mechanism. In the first step, the amide ion deprotonates the terminal alkyne, making an alkynide. This alkynide is a strong nucleophile. In our ethyl bromide, the alpha carbon is an electrophile. Thus, we get SN2 attack. And here is our product. Here's your ethyl group. And this bond came from this pair of electrons.